Welcome back to the Industry Insider. I'm Tiffany Elias. A few months ago, we took you inside the Finis headquarters in Livermore, California, to show you how their infamous monofin gets into your swim bag. We also had a sit-down discussion with Finis CEO John Mix. Now, this time, we're going to walk you through quality control, accounting, sales, and marketing. And I also got to try out some Finis products. Take a look now at the flow of Finis. I actually think this is kind of a, a, the nice part of our building is this is the receiving area and uh, and we get container ships, you know, container loads in here uh, several times per week, but everything stays over here and gets staged until we do a, a pretty thorough quality control check. So over here we've got a couple of the guys in the QC check and right now um, they're checking swimwear. and. Uh, Although today they're checking swimwear, I can see lined up in the, uh, in the process, they're going to be checking fins, they're going to be checking snorkels, they're going to be checking the electronics. Um, we just do the, the same checks that they do here are required to be done at our factories, um, but we don't just rely on our factories and assume that they've done everything correctly. We get it in here and if, uh, if we're not seeing uh, the type of uh, success rate that we expect, um, they will go through and 100% QC a lot of our inventory. Uh, we want to make sure that the consumer gets a great finished product. Wow, that's great. So every product is checked in the box, making sure the customer is getting what they pay for. Every, every single product goes through the QC process, yes. As we go out of the warehouse, we're going to come in. This is where we have the, uh, the accounting team. There's six people in the accounting team. There's uh, uh, and the sales team and the operations function. So we're going to go right through here. Um, actually, let's see, uh, Bob Bo is our CFO. So uh, Bob's a CFO. Bob's a, uh, he's a swimmer, he's a triathlete, he's a runner. Um, Bruce, nine-time Ironman finisher. Bruce is our controller. Um, his wife's a big swimmer. Bruce has a lot of uh, international experience. Um, so uh, Bruce and Bob run this department. So here we are, we're entering into the area of uh, customer service and sales, but I wanna pan over here first. Um, to the way back, we've got our compliance department. They make sure that orders are routed and sorted uh, before going out to the picking area just perfectly for some specific accounts. Uh, we have the tech support area. They are the ones that are answering the calls when a person says, hey, how do I get my Swim P3 player to load a song from iTunes? Um, we have, uh, this is, we call it the situation room. It's kind of the Yosemite room, but the situation room. Uh, when people have to have a meeting that says we're going to close the doors, we're going to figure this out until we're done, um, they go into the center of the building and everyone knows, okay, they're, they're figuring something out in there and they're not going to leave until they get it done. And uh, Then we move into uh, the process of the business, which is uh, customer service, order entry and sales and operations. Um, here, okay, uh, Colleen kind of provides a function of both, uh, um, well, it's sales support. She is responsible for the uh, all of the customization for our swimsuits. We make our swimsuits custom for every customer. Uh, we make those suits in Europe. So Colleen is talking to the coaches or the teams or the dealers and figuring out exactly what they want, helping them with their design. Uh, getting that design sent off to Europe and then coordinating with the uh, the account that we got to get this product back on time and, and out to our teams. Um, it's all a function of sales in this department uh, and, and every salesperson might play a role specific to a market. One person might call specifically on triathlon accounts. Uh, one person might call specifically on the team dealer accounts. That's Mike. Mike is a former USC swimmer. Um, Everyone in these spaces are, are calling it. Tim Elson's our VP. Tim was a former uh, head coach at Pepperdine University. Um, I'm over there in the corner. We've got a couple operational people. And uh, that's really the flow of Finis. Right, so uh, we're in the lunchroom now. And normally this is where everyone's sitting having lunch. But obviously the, 
Mark has brought his marketing team in here and they're trying to figure something out. So uh, what are you doing, guys? Oh, we're having a, a fun marketing brainstorm here. All the other rooms were taken. So we're just trying to look at all the ads that we've done in, in Swain World and other, and other out outlets to figure out what our strategy is uh, for the future and how we can you know, really connect with the swimmers out there. I mean, we're, we're sketching up some, some new ad concepts. We're looking at the social media aspect of it all too, trying to figure out some ads on that end and just trying to have some creative juices flowing. So this is where you would educate your audience, right? And education is really important for our products because they are a little bit more complicated than others. So within a, a small ad, we have to show them the product, get them excited about it, but also educate them a little bit quickly and easily without uh, you know, overcrowding the ad so it's a turn off. So it's, it's a fine line we have to walk, but it's kind of exciting. All right, so how do you decide what, what ads you want to promote, whether it's in Swimming World Magazine or online platforms? How are you deciding which products to highlight and, and how do you move forward with executing that? Some of it is product promotion. Say we have a new product launch or a new feature to a product. I mean, we'll try and highlight those. But uh, most recently, we're kind of going with a uh, emotional type of ad campaign where we're trying to focus on what summers are trying to feel at certain times of the year. You know, the taper season's coming up and they want to get ready, they want to fine tune their technique, we'll throw out a special technique item or you know, they're getting ready for the big championship meet, we have tech suits available at that time. So we're trying to, you know, trying to find the right products at the right times of year. Also we're doing it internationally, so I mean, Australia is on a different cycle than the US, so we have to plan for that as well. Tiffany, we also take care of the, uh, we have a division in Europe, it's based in Sofia, Bulgaria, and uh, this department here creates the ad concepts and the, and the ad materials for, uh, you know, we, we, I think we advertise in the triathlon magazine in Germany. There's a couple, there's an open water swimming magazine that we advertise in the UK. Um, and, you know, I would imagine what they're doing, we're, we're approaching March, they're probably working on July, August type of concept. We, we try and work three months out in advance and kind of have this big broad picture of what we want to look at for the entire year. So, uh, um, uh, it was a great detour, but let's get back on track. We got to get to the pool today. All right. Um, I want to bring you over to the uh, work at it. Now, there's Tim Elson. Now, Tim is the guy who invented the original freestyle hand paddle. He's our vice president. I'm sure most people know him. Um, so, what I was going to say is that, you know, uh, we got accounting guy out here, we got sales out here, we got the controller out here, uh, we got a leaderboard over here. Um, Bruce will pump out somewhere 150 to 200 pull ups in a day. Um, the theory is like you can some people drink coffee some people come out you lift a little bit of weight you move the body a little bit it gets the brain stimulated um, the blue tape on the floor we're dry, an endless pool is going into the building uh, at the end of March and we're gonna use that endless pool we're gonna allow the athletes to and swimmers to get in and and use it for their own enjoyment but uh, we're gonna do a lot of product testing a lot of marking a lot of video analysis in that pool um, but yeah, this, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's part of the fun factor, right? So. And everything happens under one roof. Yeah, so let's go to the pool. All right, we're all geared up. Let's get in the water. I'm gonna do a loosen up 50 and then let's try out some Foodies products. I made it to the local pool. Here I am in Livermore. Uh, looks like Tiffany and some of the Finise team beat me here. So I'm going to hand the mic over to Mark and uh, let him take through some product talk and, and see the team out there. I'm going to go get suited up. The product that Tiffany's going to try is our Finise foil monofin. It really is made of 100% rubber and it really emphasizes the, the dolphin kick starting right here from the chest. So Tiffany, I want you to concentrate nice. starting your kick right here, going all the way through creating this undulation dolphin motion, okay? As she comes back, she needs to utilize her core. It's all about building the core muscles, the strongest muscles in your body. You can feel the undulation go through the whole body.
It's called the Neptune. It'll be the next version of our Sun P3 player. Uh, what's nice is the clips kind of come up and down. They clip to the goggle strap. We'll show it on Tiffany here in a second. But now we actually have a display. We actually can go and select which music you want. Holds four gigabytes worth of songs. Um, that's about it. Just all clips to your goggles. What's the best thing about this player, though, is it continues to use our bone conduction technology. This is the speaker right here. What happens is you're going to put this next to your cheekbone in front of your ear, not in your ear or earbuds. This actually goes right on your cheekbone, and that vibrates your cheekbone and vibrates into your inner ear. So what happens is actually the best way to hear underwater because there's no air. There's no earbuds or anything. Uh, it's it's an amazing experience if you've never tried it before. It's, it's literally like the music is inside your head. Uh, it uses these vibrations, and the vibrations is how whales and dolphins communicate. Um, they don't sit there and say, hey, Mark, you know, I want something. They don't use their vocal cords. They use these, these deep, deep vibrations to, to communicate. And, you know, if I went underwater and said, hey, Tiffany, you'd be like, what did you say? Uh, so this lets us come back and, and, and go back to the basics of how humans hear underwater. So it's called the, it'll be called the Neptune. It's the next evolution of the Sumpy 3. This one's going to strap you back to your head. Perfect. So make sure you got a good connection right on the bone there. Right on the bone there. Okay. I'm good to go. Jump underwater, make sure it sounds awesome. Wow. That it it sounds like the music is like the whole music's playing underwater. Just your own personal headset here. Yeah, that's really cool. Alright, now you can warm down with it, enjoy the music. Relax, but still focus on technique. Thank you for watching the Industry Insider. Now you know what happens behind the Finice doors. For more information on Finice, you can go to their website at www.finiceinc.com. I'm Tiffany Elias. We'll see you next time.